All right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. Sorry I didn't post one last week, but I'm kind of busy. <laughs> so it's a good thing, but check it out. Here's what we're going to look at today, end cloth. Uh, a little bit more about end cloth because a lot of questions coming lately about end cloth and kind of some of the properties and how to do some stuff with it. So anyway, we're going to take a look at end cloth here. And as you can see, kind of have a monster with a like a poncho material that's an end cloth. Uh, this is about the, the most basic uh, thing I could come up with for this tutorial, so bear with me. <laughs> okay, so anyway, you see we've got end cloth going there, and it's going really slow. And it's sort of calculating just in, in the viewport here, the, you know, variables on, on what this end cloth um, properties are right now. So. Anyway, when you deal with end cloth, a lot of times what will happen is is that you get um, you know a little bit of lag in your playtime here. So you're probably going to be doing play blasts a lot with end cloth in order to check to see that it's um, you know doing a, what you want it to do. Okay, so pretty basic. Uh, I'm going to stop this simulation right about here. Uh, frame number 180, let's hit escape there, about frame 187. And you can see where uh, the end cloth is, is stretched. It's sort of run through its course and it's kind of stabilized right now. And if I take a, a quick spin around, uh, there's a lot of stretch in here. And, you know, that, that's not really what I wanted. Um, and this is sort of just a method in order to sort of get a, a clothing shape for your character. And remember, this can also be for a landscape. You could create end cloth to cover a landscape and have a mesh that mimics your landscape. And you could put a different texture on your end cloth shape or your if you convert it to polygons and just make it a standard, you know, plane. Um, there's all sorts of possibilities. So really, this is just kind of showing you a way you can sort of deform or use end cloth as a deformer to make clothes or landscapes or anything you want and just you know be able to have a variable there so anyway imagination <laughs> it's all about imagination but check this out uh, this is a pretty simple simulation I just have the um, model right here uh, it's a passive collider I just basically selected the model right there and went to my end mesh and create passive collider all right and this was basically just a plane that I went into the end mesh and made an end cloth. Pretty simple. But you'll notice here that in this mesh or in this plane, I sort of, um, you know, just deleted some faces right here. And in this case right now, you're seeing some roundedness here. And that's because um, if you hit one on the keyboard, That'll be basically the you know standard mesh. And then three is a smooth mesh. So I hit three on the keyboard and that smooths it out. And normally when I'm setting up an end cloth simulation, I'd probably just go with the hit one on the keyboard and that will let the, calc the solver calculate a little faster. And um, yeah, so you can see here, it's stretching quite a bit in the back and I, I really don't want that. So let's, um, we're going to take a look at how to control some of this stuff and um, sort of how to set this up so that this end cloth will stick to our uh, character using a transform constraint, basically. So pretty easy stuff, but it's really fun and it's a really cool thing to kind of know. Now, there's lots of different ways to work with end cloth and end cloth is sort of one of those multi-purpose things that if you think outside the box, you can do a lot of stuff with. But right now, we're just sort of interested in, in having a, this end cloth take on the shape of, of our character so we can kind of, you know, attach it to that character and, character and then model it a little bit more. So anyway, there you go. That's what we're going to do. So get a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's gonna, I don't know how long it's going to be. And a lot of times you won't see end cloth um, tutorials on YouTube or anywhere else because it takes a long time to kind of figure this stuff out and to do a simulation and run through all your frames and blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to try and do this as quick as we can. And we're going to figure out how to make this, this, this stick to the object and everything like that and deform the way we want it. So there you go. But first, before you do that, I want you to go over to Lester, get yourself an official computer graphics workwear certified by Lester Banks t-shirt. <laughs> 
That way you'll be ready for these tutorials and anything else that comes at you because Lester is on the internet 24 hours a day, seven days a week, coming up with all sorts of good stuff. He's uh, dedicated to uh, your brain and now he's dedicated to your body <laughs> with t-shirts. You can wear to work, uh, maybe. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, uh, go check Lester out all the time for new stuff. And uh, let's get on with this. <clears throat> now, the first thing we want to look at uh, is sort of the shape of the character and the shape of the cloth. Now, obviously, I just did a, a simplified version. I made a plane, I knocked out some faces, and there we go. And I converted this to an end cloth. And the first thing I noticed that when I... I um, start out the simulation here and let's I'm gonna move this over here a little bit <clears throat> all right well not moving anywhere okay so here's the initial start and you'll notice there's a lot of stretchiness there and because this is an end cloth object um, that's the first thing to to look at is what do I have as my starting values for the end cloth and over here um, by default I'm going to hit escape on this, uh, hit escape on there. By default, the end cloth shape just sort of comes in with some certain values, okay? No big deal. And there's a whole bunch of different stuff you can play around with here. And you'll notice there's drag and dampening and stretch and all sorts of stuff. Well, that's cool. We're going to work with that in a little bit, but I just want to show you something right off the bat. And it's one thing that, that people often don't really do right away is, is to check to see what this is, this the values of these um, of your end cloth is. And over here, you, you'll notice you have a solver display. And by default, I have it to collide and self-collide. That's kind of how your end cloth is set up. And um, you make sure you have these checked so that we're, we're having it collide and a self-collide. And on the solver display down here, you'll notice you have a couple of different options and in this case I want to take a look at the self collision thickness and I'll just go ahead and click that on this gives me a visual sort of representation of what um, you know is going on with each one of these vertices and how they're going to sort of interact with each other so I'm gonna go ahead and start the uh, simulation out from the top there and we'll just look at what it looks like okay so you can see it kind of has a, a flow to it. And this really just helps you visualize better what's going on. I'm going to hit like escape right about here. Okay. And I, I like where the positioning and everything of this here is for a starting sort of, you know, a start for this, this uh, end cloth effect. And if I go up here into the um, end, end solver, I can go to an initial state and I can actually then because I'm at frame 46 I can go to my initial state and set from the current frame or frame number 46 so I'll go ahead and, and do that and let me take a look at the back and see what what the back is now I notice there's a lot of stretching here so I may not want that as my initial starting um, position but if I go back to the beginning and play now, you'll notice that the mesh is not no longer up here above and falling down. It starts from right here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And you see right from frame one, well, there it is. So that's cool. Looks like it's, it's doing its thing, but I noticed something that I don't like. Okay, and I'm going to move around to the back here. <laughs> The poncho is sort of falling below this guy's butt, all right? <laughs> so, I don't know. I'd rather have it up above, you know. But then again, it's a monster. I don't know. So, anyway, uh, let's look at, at how we can deal with this real quick. Like, um, I may want to go back to the beginning and come back here. And, and not, because this is selected, I might want to choose my solver again. And I might want to come to my initial state and clear that initial state. And if I do that, it, it kind of, you know, defaults and goes back to where it was before. So easy way to get rid of it. Now I'm going to turn this off for a second, self collision off, and I'm going to go back and, and play this out. And as you can see, the end cloth falls and it does its stretchy thing. 
And I don't really like that. I don't like the way it's stretching. I'd rather have it just fall and sort of conform to the model itself. So I'll go ahead and, and just hit escape on the keyboard, stop that. And I might want to try the stickiness value and bring that way up to begin with here. And now that I brought that stickiness value up, you'll see where, you know, the, the kind of sticks to the, to the model there. And it's running a little bit slower. And that's okay. I'm going to let this play out until this kind of comes to a rest. And it'll be easier to work with at that point. And um, yeah, it takes a while. So, you know, anytime you do end cloth simulations and when you're in your smooth mesh mode or, you know, you're, you're, if you hit three on the keyboard and made this smooth, well, then it's going to take a little longer to calculate. So sometimes you might want to just, you know, be in your non-smooth method when you're doing this. So uh, that looks pretty good for me uh, right about there. So I'm going to hit escape on the keyboard. And I think what I might want to do is come up here into my um, end solver. I'll go to my initial state and I'll go ahead and set it from the current. And I'll go back to the beginning here. And there it is. So you, you'll notice that even setting it from the current, there's still some stretching that's going on there. Well, we're still in default. Remember that, that end cloth, you have a lot of properties to work for or work with. So we're going to take a look at some of those over here. You know, you have a, bare, a, a thickness scale and a self collide width scale. Well, look at your end cloth right here and turn on this self collision thickness and you'll notice that you have these ping pong like ball things here. You can bring that thickness up in the self collide width scale. So if I were to switch this a little bit and just bring this width scale up a little bit to say like six, all right, then you can see where this is gonna basically help you uh, avoid, oh, say like the back, like this cloth passing through itself, okay? So if you have interpenetration issues, then this should help solve that. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to hit escape on the keyboard, take a quick look at this, and you know, it's basically deformed to the character, kind of like the way I'd like to see it, I guess, for the moment. So no big deal. Uh, I might turn that off for a minute on the uh, self collide. And, you know, remember, you can vary the thickness. Now, the thickness means that the, the higher the value of your thickness here, the heavier the material is. All right. So I'm going to go back to the beginning and we're not going to notice much difference right now. But if I were to put this thickness scale up quite a bit, it would make this stiffen up quite a bit. So anyway, I'll, I'll go back to the beginning and see now that I have that that on there. It's going very slow. Um, you know, the, the, the higher you raise your thickness value, the slower this will actually move. So right there, I got the spinning beach ball of death. All right, so I don't know what that means, but I'm gonna hit escape on the keyboard. All right, because sometimes you can, you know, really raise this thickness level up to where Maya can't even calculate the, <laughs> you know, how to make it work all right so that's what's happening there that's that's sort of like an automatic crash that will almost always happen if you give yourself too much thickness all right so right now Maya's is not responding so I'm gonna just do a um, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and do a force quit we'll just force quit that all right and I'll just hit ignore and we'll launch Maya once again and um, yeah, we'll take care of that. But let's get on with it. We're going to build a special, uh, what would you call? We'll just do this so that um, you can kind of understand exactly what we're working with. So go ahead and call up a new scene. And we'll just create a, a simple uh, polygon sphere. And end cloth generally, it's always with polygons. So always be kind of using polygons. And in this case, I might take this sphere and just sort of center it out. So go ahead and grab your uh, channel box there and give it a zero and a zero. And there we go. It's in the center. Um, I also might want to create at this time 
a what's known as a locator so if you go to locator and just click on locator it'll show up in the the center of your XYZ right there I'll go into that mode and you can see where there it is right in the origin so that's cool we've got a locator um, I'm going to basically take that locator and let's bring up the outliner real quick and take that locator and parent it with the sphere okay now the reason for doing this I'm gonna go ahead and hit parent the reason for parenting it with this sphere is that we're going to basically attach um, our vertices of our end cloth to this locator and it's always going to follow this sphere so if this were an animated object which we're gonna go ahead and animate it right now and just sort of check out what happens so I'm gonna go back into a non x-ray mode and I'm going to take this sphere and I think let's set it to like 300 frames so we'll go to 300 frames and at the beginning frame right there let's just go ahead and uh, let's let's choose all of these shift select and grab grab these over here and do a key selected and that'll put a key frame right there and let's come forward about maybe oh 40 frames or so it doesn't matter and bring this up and real rapidly and I'm gonna go ahead and key selected and then I think what I'll do is bring it forward a little bit more and bring it down sort of like that and do a key selected and I'm gonna just gonna kinda of do that the whole way through here bring it forward a little bit more I wanna bring this over and back and maybe over that way come back over to these guys do a key selected and come back over here and maybe move this over here and here and over there and actually down a little bit more whatever and actually um, because I have the rotational um, axes that I can keyframe I might want to just sort of introduce some kind of spin right there I don't know okay so we have some random stuff happening right now I'll, I'll go back to the beginning of the animation and play it and here we go so we're gonna have some cloth that sticks to this object and I think by there let's let's maybe keyframe this again maybe bring this over here and rotate it back to kinda of where it was and yeah something like that I mean basically we're just fooling around here so I'm gonna go ahead and right mouse click go key selected because I have all of those selected and here we go okay so now we have like an animated ball and in the center of that ball we have that locator okay and you, I don't know if you can see it very well on YouTube here but that locator is in the inside there and that's cool because we want to parent our end cloth to that and that's what's gonna happen now so I'll go back to the beginning of the animation and I'm gonna come up here and do a create polygon primitive plane and I'll just do a plane there we'll just kind of do that and I think I might center this out on the zero axes just to kind of make things smooth but no big deal okay so there we go so we have that I might want to you know select my my end cloth first like this is might be an end cloth object but in terms of what I did before I basically came in here I went into the um, top view hit spacebar on your keyboard I think I might go into shaded mode there and basically right mouse click and go to vertex mode and I think in this case I may want to look and see where that is underneath there so if I just sort of you know uh, shift and, and go to your your choose tool over here and do a shift select kinda like those vertices right there you can um, press your control um, and and go to vertices if you selected edges um, in this case I want to de delete those those vertices so I might want to um, press down on my shift key and right mouse click and go to delete vertex okay and that basically just deletes those vertexes and makes you know a face so I'll right mouse click go back into object mode and I think I might go back into shaded mode here and let's get off of there and maybe uh, select my my plane there and right mouse click and um, go into uh, face mode alright and I'll just select that face and hit delete okay 
and now hovering anywhere in here just press the space bar go back to your perspective view hover in here press space bar and now you can sort of right mouse click on here and go back into object mode okay so there we go we basically have an opening or something that we can sort of work with uh, as we attach it to our object so that's cool now the next thing we want to do is just sort of make this into an end cloth so I'm gonna go there go to my end mesh create end cloth all right and there we go make sure you're in your end dynamics menu set and in this case I'll select my sphere right here and go to my end mesh and make that a passive collider okay so if I'm at the beginning of the animation go ahead and hit play okay you can see right away what happened um, let's zoom out a little bit here uh, let me play there right about there if I stop the animation you know the object is basically cruising through the material and it's reacting the way it probably should be reacting um, and that's cool so let's go back to the beginning I'm gonna hit play again and right about there um, you can see where I, I may want to take some of these edges and attach them so that they sort of stay attached to this sphere and it's pretty easy to do what we gotta look at is selecting our our um, vertices from our end cloth and selecting some vertices from our object down here so in this case I'll go back choose my end cloth come over here and go into vertex mode and, and I'll just go ahead and, and select these vertices maybe just like you know some random ones around this edge we don't um, in this case I don't need to get too precise but I'm just going to basically select some of these vertices around you know the surrounding edges all right and that is basically what's going to connect to this this sphere so I'm going to go ahead and while I'm in this vertex mode I want to shift and select this object underneath here that we're going to attach it to and then while I'm on this object right here with the cursor I want to right mouse click and go into vertex mode as well and I might want to just choose some vertices uh, I'm gonna hit shift and select all of these so with the shift button down I'm selecting some of these vertices in here and in some cases you may have to hide the visibility of your plane in order to get to some vertices down here but in this case I think I'll just sort of manually look at how to do this and come in here a little closer I think I'll just choose keep the shift button down and choose some more vertices around here and sort of just kind of get some various points around this um, around this sphere and we could choose this one and sort of select those and that should give me enough points to kind of pull together so that's cool all right we're almost there now with this these both of these selected you want to come up and go into end constraint and just go to transform and what you'll notice is that it creates a transform node right here and then these turn green and that means that they're going to sort of be con constrained to the surface of you know this sphere so that's cool all right now let's do a test and see what what happened because we did that I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and you'll notice like a lot of wacky stuff right off the bat happens and we're gonna try and fix some of this stuff so there it goes and it's getting all whacked out and that's cool I'm gonna go back to the beginning here and I'm going to choose my my end cloth for starters and I just want to kind of try and move that down a little bit I'm going to see what happens there as we move that down the reason that that it's getting all whacked out is because we haven't really parented the right things here okay because essentially what we did is we we did not parent this dynamic constraint to this locator that's inside of inside of this object so with our dynamic constraint that we just created which is this X right there we need to parent that to our sphere locator shape okay 
because then we'll have the correct calculations in order for Maya to figure out where this is in 3D space. So I'm going to go ahead and command select that locator shape right there and we're going to parent those. So I'll just hit parent and in my outliner here you see we got our sphere, we got our locator one, we got our dynamic constraint and that is cool. Okay so I'm going to basically go back and let's go back to the beginning and now take a look. Okay, I'll zoom out a little bit there. Okay, as you can see, it's doing exactly what we think it should do. It's constrained to that object, and it's sort of flying about, about like it's, you know, sort of attached. And it's doing what we, you know, kind of would expect it to do. Um, a lot of times you'll get some various interpenetration errors and things like that. And there's lots of different ways to solve that, but for the moment, it's it's probably more important just to know the concept of what's happening here, you know, between your your constraints, so to speak. <laughs> okay, so that's getting kind of kind of out there now. I'm going to go ahead and and escape from this simulation real quick. Go back to the beginning, and at this point, you might want to look at what is exactly going on with your end cloth. And if you go over here into your uh, attributes, you can look at, um, you know, your collision strength and, you know, we haven't adjusted any of these. So, you know, essentially let's, let's play around with that. Let's take our self collide width scale and maybe just bring it up a little bit. And you can always turn on your collision, uh, self collision thickness and see what's happening with that. So I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to hit play. And by increasing this self collide width scale, that helps a, a bit with smoothing out, you know, the the geometry there. Now, I'm going to hit escape and bring this back here, and let's take a look at at um, a couple of things here. If I were to go and set that to off, you have lots of dynamic properties with stretch resistance, compression, and essentially these mean what they what they say you know you have a mass we could lower the mass on that a little bit um, and it's going to give us a different effect um, so really it's it's a matter of taking a look at what's going on over here uh, we don't have any stickiness or bounce on which is okay and remember that you know this right here is a default end cloth material and that you always have these presets you can come to over here and say we make this more like silk. I can go here, I can choose silk and hit replace. And now when I play the simulation, this will have probably a little bit more, yeah, a little bit more like a silk feel. I'll try and move that back there. And you may run into less interpenetration errors uh, with your materials. Um, to, it all depends on what you're doing. Um, and this really isn't even all that good of an example. Uh, I'm going to come in here and, and take a look at what we got. Yeah, you can see where there's lots of weird stuff happening. Um, in most cases, it was because I just sort of randomly chose vertices to attach this end cloth to. So if you're really a lot more precise about um, how you're attaching this end cloth, uh, you'll get a little bit better result. Um, so you really kind of have to think about that in, in terms of how you're going to, uh, to attach that. Now I'm going to get out of this um, scene for a second and I think what I'll do is just um, go to my recent file and I think I'll go to... Uh, I think I had a... I'm not going to save that. I kind of had a, a this guy again and sort of animated him to kind of jump up all right <laughs> there you go so you know this this is sort of like a, a cached animation and I'm going to show you what what you should do when you get done you know with creating one of these transformed constrained end cloths I'm going to go ahead and leave it like there for a second um, what you want to do is is just you know choose your end cloth I don't know come up here and come into your um, end cache 
and just you know create a new cache um, when you have kind of a simulation that you like and when you do that um, it basically will go through frame by frame and it'll establish you know it'll it'll memorize basically what your end cloth deformations are here and um, that way it'll, it'll play back faster and you can you know scrub through it and see exactly what's happening with that rather than waiting for um, you know Maya to calculate everything <laughs> okay all right so let's see here this has been way too long I'm gonna hit escape there for a minute and let's see what uh, yeah there it is and you can see where I actually have some some there's some you know problems here and you're always going to be working with those I can't really get into a lot of the solutions for this at the moment I will do another tutorial that covers some of those options uh, but for now you know just play with your self collide, uh, self collide width scale and a little bit on the thickness right here I have almost no thickness set there so if I change my thickness up then I'll probably be able to avoid some of this interpenetration stuff okay <laughs> So there you go. Okay, sorry I've babbled on, but really there's a lot to this and you just need to get past this one concept to really sort of get a grip on how N-Cloth is working. All right. So, hey, thanks for watching and um, have a great weekend. And uh, as always, read a book because it's good for your brain. And it, read the owner's manual. Pick up those Autodesk owner's manuals because the answers are in there. I mean, there's a ton of information in there and I can't stress to you enough how, you know, if you're just trying to watch video tutorials to learn this stuff, um, it's, you know, <laughs> yeah, read the manual. I mean, and read your help section. Go always go up here and your help. All right. So there you go. And as always, be a good person. All right. Because I know you are anyway, because you're watching this tutorial. <laughs> all right. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.